And so, the hound weaves its final chapter in its tale of life. Those are the very first few words we see upon popping the game into the PlayStation 2. Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII. And this is the final part, and guess what I did? I fucked up in recording the commentary. Well, I didn't mess up in recording the commentary, but I did mess up in editing it, because in Layden's terms, the commentary sounds funny. So you get post. Omega has awoken, and chaos has been drawn out of the shadows to serve as a counterbalance, or so it would seem. Hmm. However, in theory, that exist inside Omega should act as a type of virtual network. It wouldn't be impossible, but maybe I could... Vincent, be grateful that I not only uploaded Lucrezia's thoughts, but her wishes and dreams as well. Uplink successful. Now commencing. SNG. Right off. Oh. Uh. 
Take this. Vincent. Materia, I found you. Thank you. 
Dr. Lucretia Crescent. So I am to collect the data file, the fragments she left within the network? Correct. Then you are to use that data to find the proto material. That is where he requires your assistance. He? That information is unnecessary. Connect with her, Vincent. Connect with her heart. The warm breeze on our skin. I know that it no longer exists. Things fade with time, as do many things in this world. But there are some things that we cannot let disappear. Hmm?
You're late. Sorry about that. <laughs> Not that I mind, though. She... She was always like that. <laughs> Only believing what she wanted to. So, Vincent... Why don't you try telling her that yourself? Maybe I will. But before that, I have a story to end. Omega and Chaos. Welcome to the last, well, one of the last stages of the game. Unfortunately, I have to watch myself play with myself. God, that sounds so very wrong. Either way, we're playing as the almighty and legendary Chaos, the level 4 limit break from Final Fantasy VII, and we are equipped with the ultimate weapon, Death Penalty. It is only available upon entering these levels that are coming up. It's basically perfect. Everything's S rank. And again, it's... I, well, at least in this game, I believe it's powered based off of how many enemies he killed. Don't quote me on that, actually. You might have to do a bit of research. Either way, all your other guns are basically useless in these stages. Because, I mean, Death Penalty is just, at this point, so overpowered that all you really have to do is worry about using that instead. I mean, despite having a little bit less than optimal ammo than what most people would like, I mean, 600 is very little. And as you saw there, it, it did quite a bit of area of effect. I don't think it does that normally, however. So don't count on always saving your butt there. These strange little things, I've nicknamed them the b white blood cells of Omega, as they're trying to keep you out and you are like a virus. Excuse, if, excuse it if you hear any background noise, I'm fiddling with my pencils. Which I shouldn't be doing. And, uh... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to say past that in terms of post-commentary. I mean, real, all, really all this is is just a bunch of linear stages. You can't really go anywhere. Alright, in the actual failed recording, I call that a mistake upon game designing. And it's true, I do consider it a bit of a mistake. It's showing off how powerful we are, and we can't actually do that. I mean, there I was just showing off that, you know, we can't actually fly, but we can jump and actually do two different types of combos. But, you know, all we can do right now is a single jump. There's not much more. By the way, at the end of these... these but, 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 but what am I trying to say? These, these, at the end of these stairwells, you will find itchy ear, itchy ear. No, you will not find an itchy ear, but you will find the last Omega report file at the very top. And knowing me, I didn't collect all of the Omega report files, but hey, you win some, you lose some. Am I right? But for some reason, those things made me mad. But I mean, it's understandable, my health just suddenly dropped. Anyway, right there is the Omega Report file. And I'll try to read it as best I can, but it might go too fast for me. Um... 
Proto-Materia. I have determined the materia found by Dr. Valentine at the Fountain of Chaos to be a type of refined antimatter formed within the grotto over the past several millennia. millennia. I believe the planet created this instrument out of necessity as a means to control chaos and prolonging its own inevitable fate. By controlling chaos, the planet also succeeds in preventing the advent of Omega. And chaos is allowed to, if a, chaos is allowed to fulfill his destiny of destruction, Omega's awakening cannot be far behind. That is why I, and it trails off from there. Um, there's something I learned from my friends. It's you know, I'm only 17. I'm still going to high school. I learned it from specifically the one I love. That if you collect all the G report files, that there will be an alternate end. Well, there won't be an alternate ending, but there will be an addition to the ending as is. But since I don't have all those either, I think they're all get clustered up on one stage. I don't know. Either way, cutscene. Shutting up. about the way everything's clear over here they're all yours now Bedford. all in a day's work fire When did I start caring so much about what happened? The rest is up to you. Something has always pestered me about that cutscene. But this isn't really the end of it. <laughs> I'm just kind of chirping in. Now you guys should see where I'm coming from by calling these things white blood cells. They're trying to keep us out of Omega, and these are like these veins. See how I make the analogy here? Now that I get actually get a chance to listen to the actual video, so far I'm impressed by the audio quality in which the music is playing. I was expecting it to be rather terrible. But really, that's the only flying section. After that, you're on ground for the rest of the game. Really sucks. I, I, you kind of hope they'd use that a bit more. Now is just a little bit of a survival deal, kind of like the hun kill a hundred enemies game, except it doesn't involve a hundred enemies. It just involves like ten or so of these things. How much in we're up to seven? So I assume there's eight, ten, 
Because there's more than 10. That's like 11. By the way, anyone can translate Japanese. I'd love to know what they're saying right now. But I mean, you know, it's a, it's a minority. You don't have to comment. Plus, I know it's not that clear. The game just purposely does this. It likes to... It likes to do that. In which it just... Syncs the music up to, so that way it's like perfect timing. It's like, this music plays now, even, even though they didn't even specifically script that. It's impressive, I must say. Though the screaming still scares me. Now, in some, some senses, it makes sense, because, I mean, Omega is created of the souls of the pure, and the pure have been mercilessly executed. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me, I'm re-recording this commentary, not on a Saturday. My internet's down, and this is kind of the only thing to do. I was just kind of pointing out how these look like kind of like flesh or something, if you know what I mean. And this is like the ascension to heaven that I was thinking of. And then just enjoying the music a bit longer. This I consider a redundant section, because basically all you have to do is kill a few enemies and you proceed. This is like those loading elevators, or those hallways that are just there so that way the game has time to finish processing the next area. I mean, why not do that in a cutscene? And that's the end of this stage. And I got an S rank off it. Except for critical hits and magic cast. You can't really get critical hits with death penalty and magic casted. Well, you can't equip materia to it, so there's really no point to it. Then we just get free money. And then experience at this point is really kind of redundant, but you, you, you can keep adding on if you want. I mean, this is the last time you can add experience, so yeah. Level 37 is the highest level I've achieved. Maybe you can beat me. I don't know. Give it a shot if you want. And then just restocking on uh, bullets for no, for no apparent reason. I'm not even going to use that gun anyway. I got death penalty. And I'm just proving you can't modify death penalty.
God, how long was I talking here? Okay. A finale chaotic. This is the beginning of a three-stage boss fight. The Crystal Feelers. We have to knock those out. Just pointing out. We can now pick up ammunition for the death penalty. Now you can't shoot the feelers. You actually have to smack them. So you have to watch. Go up and hit. It's an instant kill. Does quite a bit of damage as well. Really, the entire time, I was just mumbling to myself, where's the next one going to go, where's the next one going to go? And just how annoying these things were. That was about it, though. I mean, it, it wasn't necessarily all that important. But then again, nothing, really, during long moments of unfortunate suspense for both me and the viewer, have I said anything remotely I mean it I have I said anything remotely remarkable about nothing happening I mean the least I could do at this point if I if I was still using the original commentary was to at least talk about something um maybe how I maybe I should maybe I should have started talking about how I feel felt about this game because this is basically the very last stage it's the very last boss fight though not what will inevitably rise from the water once we kill these feelers. I, I think I turned around and said, oh, hi. <laughs> That's basically what I did there. It's just, there's so many of them, they're all looking at me. It's like, oh, hello there. I didn't know you were there. And that was so close. You'd, you'd think I'd have gotten it. And now I'm just kind of camping it out. But no. Huh. <sighs> Excuse me again. It decides to switch. And now there's only one left, and basically all that's left to do is run up to it and Yeah, smack it. It's just a long wait for it to actually do that. Occasionally. And I got shot. Cheap shot! Anyway, I should have mentioned that I, ki I kind of came up with a controversial religious ordeal for the previous little segment when we were killing the feelers, because Vincent was walking on the water, and I was kind of going into how, in religious past, that if witches were claimed to be unholy and unpure, and water claimed to be pure, so if a witch was thrown into the water, he or she would float back up. If you were pure, well, sucks to be you, you died kind of deal. So I was just comment I was going during the original commentary I was commenting on how like Vincent would represent that he's walking on the water rather than going into it. But that's only because it's evil rather than a godlike form. Anyway, yeah, cutscene.
This is the true and almighty Omega weapon, though technically Omega Weiss. This boss is a few phases. This is the first, in which primarily fires misses at you, creates shockwaves. That works. And all you really have to do is just worry about shooting both Weiss and Omega at the same time for maximum damage. As they'll do around roughly 3,000 damage every time. If they get separated, you really just want to focus on shooting one. But either way, that's really all you want to do during the first phase. Run around, shoot it, try not to die. Everything you've been doing up until this point, am I right? But I mean, the playing field has severely changed. Now the blocks, now you're actually on blocks and they're all rising and falling. I think it's kind of represents cities. And right there, I used a limit breaker because, well, I thought it'd be useful. But he goes straight into phase two. And from that, phase two really is only different through only one aspect, and that is that he'll start doing different things. He'll launch Weiss at you, he'll pull these up, for example. I mean, right there, you see Weiss just drop down. And he would have handed me my ass on a silver plate if I didn't stop firing at Omega. And then after that comes phase three, in which, oh yeah, Omega will royally own you by firing me. And this is basically the equivalent of Sephiroth's Super Flare, and now Omega will simply try to smash you to bits. And I just proceed to royally own him instead. But yeah, basically this fight is just made easier with the limit break, so make sure you have a few on hand. Also, make sure you have enough health to survive Meteor.
Omega ascending. But that would mean... And that is the end of the game. And this is kind of credits hidden in a cutscene. But notice that this Mako is purple. It's corrupted and that's chaos. Vincent's not dead, chaos is. Don't, don't get that wrong. Either way, you'll see a f bunch of familiar names pop up from Final Fantasy VII. They jumped onto this to work on it. I don't think too many did, actually. I mean, Saku Nakaki. I probably butchered the hell out of that one. Yusuke Naura. I didn't read any of the names, I was just talking about the game. And right there is the Cerberus Relief, or Vincent's Lucky Keychain. Because it's, it's actually on a Cerberus during Advent Children, as well as, like, during certain cutscenes and on the cover of the game and such, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's it. That's the game. Personally, I think this game is a heck of a lot better than most modern-day first-person shooters. I honestly do. I don't care if some mighty game god that decides to smite me for it. <sighs> this game's just so much better, in my opinion. Primarily because, you know, even though it's linear as hell, and Final Fantasy VII was open, it's a, it's a major fine like difference. The, there's custom a bit, like custom as a, but, 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 what word am I trying to invent here? There's customization of guns, for one. Plus, I mean, there's a money system, there's an upgrade system, there's a level system, there's great music. <laughs> I have to point out the great music. There's a I'm okay, I'm mad now, I'm going to pwn you K tanks by mode or limit breaks. Steeple. I think all the voice actors in this game are pulled from Advent Children, except for a few that weren't in Advent Children, like maybe the voice of Weiss or Rozo or I mean, see, look, G is a voice actor, which means he's in the game somewhere. Excuse me. Nasty thing I have to do. Okay, that's quickly. Hang on again. Now I should be done. But I mean, yeah. Um, through the upgrading, you can actually make a style that fits you rather than you have to learn what everybody else is doing. Like, for example, and I don't mean to pick on Treyarch or anything, because I haven't played World at War, and I probably won't because of the fact that I've been hearing so much about the hackers and online, it's just 
Doesn't seem like it's worth it anymore. But I mean, to win in that game, all you gotta do is slap on Ghost and Ninja and a Silencer and you're good. That's not diversity, for one. But, and, and in this game, you don't have much of a choice in which, you know, you, you have to make up your own game style. Either way, as you can see, there's the share. It's crashed. And the ever-sleeping Shilua. By the way, this is the only freaking appearance of Red 13. Sorry, ruined cutscene, but I had to fit that in. Everyone's waiting, Vincent Valentine. I don't know why they made me come up here and get you. <laughs> Not that I mind, though. Did you see the cloud shape like Omega? Anyway, I don't feel like I've been able to express my thoughts upon 
you know, why I think this game's so much better. You can do so many things to your gun, make it so much more adaptable than what you can do in something like Call of Duty Black Ops. All you can really do is make your class adaptable to what you want to play. After that, it's not much. But I mean, in this, I mean, you have three different types of guns you can have, and they're all fairly powerful. You have the Cerberus, the Hydra, and the Griffin. You can customize their barrel, you can customize their power, basically. You can do a lot of things to the gun, and in a way, it'll have a counterbalance against what you put on it. And, you know, if more games did something like that, I'd probably change my mind. But a lot of games don't. Because, I mean, I think Square Enix was on to something here with the gun customization. I'm not really sure if they want to put it through. But anyway, upon beating the game on either normal or hard difficulty, if you run through the game again, you have a new mode, Extra Hard, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's harder than hard. The thing is with Extra Hard, though, is that you start off with all your previous equipment, all your previous money, but not your previous level. Now, let's delve into the extra features. There's really only event viewers, character viewers, all that kind of sweet stuff. But aside from that, not much. Uh, official trailers, you have to unlock them. You basically have to unlock all of this by shooting secret targets. Kind of sucks. Anyway. Um... Look at this solid gate. <laughs> I'm. Are you in the original commentary, which I won't include? Maybe I'll include maybe the laugh. It doesn't sound so bad. But <laughs> I was sitting here rolling for a couple of minutes. Because <laughs> I mean, look at that. That's a legit ripoff of Metal Gear Solid by Square. They're not even made by the same. No, they're not made by the same company. It's Namco and Square Enix for crying out loud, and they ripped. Square just ripped Namco off. I don't know, if I'm not mistaken, I think maybe in a couple of Namco's products, I, I might even be wrong about the publisher or developer, but I think in a couple of Namco's products, they have Final Fantasy references, maybe, I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, I, that just struck, struck me as very funny, because I looked at that and said, that's legit. <laughs> Because I was going to use something similar to that as my title for, you know, the sneaky Metal Gear Kate Sith part. But, <laughs> I just pulled one off there. Anyway, the rest of the things, you know, minor, little 100% unlockable things that I have nothing else of. I only have a few events. And I'm sorry, I'm really tired. I should be getting to bed. But I'm not, because I'm doing this post-commentary, and because there is no freaking internet. I swear, if it's still down <laughs> tomorrow, I am not going to be very happy. But you guys won't know, because by the time this is uploaded, I'll have internet back. If ever. Anyway, here I am explaining extra missions. I promised I'd show these, to, to a viewer at least. I'm only going to show one, and even then, spoilers, I fail at it. I didn't even find find the goal. Anyway, she's alive in the extra missions. Don't ask me why, and she even still has her mechanical arm that, you know, obviously is not co connected to the nervous system and everything. I mean, I mean, the furthest I'll get into extra missions is that it's basically like extra hard mode. You start off at level one. You have all your equipment, but the difference is you don't have your items, and you don't have your level. So you have, like, all these overpowered guns for anything level 1, and, yeah, that's how, it, that's how it works. Now you can find healing items, and, excuse me, I'm clicking my pencils again. You can find all these items, you can find limit breakers, etc., etc., and, you know, it's a, it's a nice feature and everything, and I, I believe they were a little onto something here. But, you know, maybe not the whole nine yards. It's kind of like the gun customization. They're, they were onto something. But nobody's just paying attention. Either way, 
here are the objectives. And, well, basically find the goal in 10 minutes. Not a whole lot else is going on. Now, those red gates you cannot open regardless. Blue gates you can still open so long as you got a card key. And I got an extra file. I honestly don't know what those are for. I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't really even know, I don't think. But either way, the... The entire point of this is really a bonus mode for, you know, if you don't want to replay the campaign, then you can play this for a couple more hours. It's basically to squeeze a couple more minutes out of the game. Huh, whatever, yeah, that's about it. Excuse me. But, I mean, as you see, I'm, I still have my... What, I think it was... Yeah, it was the S Cerberus, the Super Cerberus. It was the S Cerberus, P Griffin, and the M Hydra. And... I mean, yeah. This could be fun, but... Honestly, <laughs> I'm not going to sit through and play through all the missions. They're, they're difficult. And then, this is like another instance in the game, through extra missions... Excuse me, my throat's parched that you can get under something. I don't get it. That gate's not even blocking the entire thing and I can't I still can't get through. But I mean Yeah, this is extra missions mode. It's different. And I mean this isn't even part of the original Final Fantasy seven game. It may be a part of like another one. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I mean it just feels like that. If it's not from Final Fantasy VII, then you know it's from another Final Fantasy. <coughs> yeah, my throat's getting dry. How'd I do this for an entire hour, by the way? Commentating. But, uh... Yeah, either way. Enjoy me playing an eventual fail at Here's a Card Key. While I get a drink, so... Yeah. I got my drink. Now, you see, I made some progress, but my health's low, and I don't feel like using my limit breaker, and time's about to run out, so I just pretty much let myself die. But yeah, that is the gist of the extra missions. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a nice idea. But I mean, if I were to design a game, I probably wouldn't include it. Only because it would seem kind of... It would seem like I'm trying to s sell my game for a different reason. If I put extra mix missions in. Because I mean, my primary focus is storytelling and campaign. Because we know how most of those games are. They, they suck. Quite frankly. Most games with the story kind of fail nowadays. That's why they rely so heavily on upon multiplayer. But either way, that is Georgia Cerberus. I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. Please don't forget, please don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next Let's Play. So until then, farewell.